Good morning. Welcome to Senate Finance. Today is Thursday, November 9th. The time is 9.05 a.m. I'm Co-Chairman Anna McKinnon. With me this morning, Co-Chairman Hoffman, Vice Chairman Bishop, Senator Machicki, Senator Von Imhoff, Senator Stevens, and Senator Olson. <coughs> is there anything to come before the committee before we begin? Seeing and hearing none, I'd like to invite David Teal, the Legislative Finance Division Director, to the microphone. If you're following us off net or online, uh, you should be able to find our documents. This particular PowerPoint is labeled Alaska Fiscal Future. It's dated November 9th, 2017. David Teal, Director, is also there. Mr. Teal, welcome to Senate Finance. Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess I put myself on the record, although I think you did that. Uh, David Teal, Director of Legislative Finance. And some members of the public may wonder uh, why we have the model in front of the committee again, because SB 26 is not in front of the committee. The answer to that's pretty simple, I think. It's that the model is designed to be a tool to help evaluate fiscal paths and uh, what is in front of your committee or the legislature, the special session, is a, the governor's employment tax. So the model is designed to help the legislature and, and others uh, see how much, if any, tax is required to meet your fiscal goals. So that's why we're looking at the model. And a lot has changed since the last time you saw the model at the end of last session. Um, as you know, the Department of Revenue updated the revenue forecast in October, just, just a special session started, followed soon after by OMB updating its 10-year expenditure plan. And then just last week, the permanent fund released projections that included uh, a revised earnings rate, revised downward from 6.95 to 6.5%. Now, because it doesn't do much good to look at model output uh, unless you know what you want the output to, to show, I want to spend a moment discussing what to look for in any scenario. This is not re related to any specific uh, screen print that we're going to show today. It's just related to the model in general. E uh, essentially, it's just um, a way of asking what conditions make a particular plan a success. So slide three uh, has some goals here that, that I guess I could say are the governor's goals or they're my goals or something, but goals on these things are individual. Uh, and individuals may not necessarily agree on the goals. And in, in fact, I would say that if the House, Senate, and the governor could agree on the goals, you would have a bill already. So that these, the goals are something that may be common to all plans, but, but for instance, the Senate may want to add a goal that says we, we hope to accomplish various other goals without taxes. There's the, the goals here stated, some stated by the governor very clearly and others just sort of uh, an interpretation of, of what he's asked for, what the Senate, what the House have, have looked for in models. So the first goal is that deficits will fade away before the projection period ends. You don't need to balance the budget in FY19 or FY20 as long as you're making progress and balance by 26 or 27, you can count that a win. Second goal is there are no unplanned draws from the earnings reserve account. Another way of saying that is that the CBR, the Constitutional Budget Reserve Account, is not depleted because once you deplete the budget reserve account, the assumption is that you will then draw from the earnings reserve account. 
and any unplanned draw from the earnings reserve account reduces the balances, reduces the future payouts, and, and makes it harder and harder to have a plan that works. <coughs> Third is that you want the permanent fund balance to keep pace with inflation. And fourth, and this is one that, that probably is less agreement on, but have some minimum level of permanent fund dividends. So setting your own goals is going to help you determine whether a plan works and more importantly, how you can modify that plan to make it work better for you. Mr. Teal, if we could pause for a moment, I would like to acknowledge that Senator Stedman and Senator Hughes have been with us the entire time. And I know that other uh, policymakers are following this discussion online. So just wanted to uh, thank Senator Hughes and Senator Stedman for joining us this morning. Please continue. Slide four reviews the changes that have occurred since last, ses last session. Actually, this slide is only the changes to revenue and expenditures. Um, first is revenue. The fall forecast is generally lower than the 4% decline scenario that we used last year. I know there's some confusion on, on that. Legislators and the press, others have said that, that great news on the revenue forecast, it's higher than it was. Um, that's true, the forecast that revenue released is higher. Uh, it's about a billion dollars higher. But half of that occurs in 2027. We can't compare that to last year's model because it stopped in 26. So the roughly $529 million that revenue is, uh, uh, that's left of that revenue forecast. In other words, the 19 through 26 revenue forecast published by the Department of Revenue is $529 million above last year's spring 4% decline. But last spring, the Department of Revenue omitted $65 million annually of premium taxes, insurance premium taxes, and this year, that $65 million is included in the forecast. $65 million a year times eight years is $520 million. So you can see that revenue is essentially a wash. It's the same as last year's forecast. And uh, again, here are the numbers. It's in the early years, it's down almost $100 million, then turns uh, to being higher. The net reduction is $54 million over the period 19 through 26. That is uh, only about $7 million a year. You won't even see that on the graphs. Senator Machicki. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Teal, I have before me the actual Department of Revenue fall uh, or revenue forecast presentation that was given to Senate Finance on October 25th. I'm sorry, October 30th, 2017. Just want to be clear. I mean, the official was the 12% decline. The 4% was sort of an un unofficial update, if you will. And their total change in general fund unrestricted revenue was $2.3 billion. Um, from the preliminary fall to the spring official. And then with the 4% decline was, like you said, a billion dollar difference, $921 million with the greatest change being in the out years 26 and 27 once the um, credits were, were paid off. So pretty significant difference. Um, why do you show numbers differently than the method that Department of Revenue um, does I just want to clarify for the public, there is a significant upside on revenue. Um, could you just explain the differences between Department of Revenue and legislative finance? Certainly. Through the chair, Senator Machicki, the you are comparing the Department of Revenue's official numbers. As I said, they did not include in the spring forecast $65 million a year. That's now built in to their fall forecast. 
that accounts for $520 million of the difference. So what, what I'm comparing here is what we used in the model last year to what we're using in the model this year. So we had the $65 million premium increase built in last year, and of course we still built it in. So our revenue forecast in the model was $65 million a year higher than the official forecast. It's now identical to the official forecast because DOR corrected that $65 million uh, error in the fall forecast. When, or when they published the fall forecast, they included that additional $65 million, which is not oil revenue. So um, I guess one way of saying this is, is that the increase in revenue uh, in the official forecast is not due to increase oil prices or production. It's primarily due to correction of a technical error in the forecast. Senator Machicki, follow up. No, I'm fine for now. Thank you, Madam Chair. If, if I could, for those that are following uh, at home, uh, the Senate Finance team in the Anchorage area um, heard from the administration. Uh, we heard from the Department of Revenue. We heard from DNR, and we heard from the Permanent Fund Corporation. So as Mr. Teal reflected earlier, the goal of this presentation is to establish a range of possibilities that Alaska faces. And there is a range. And so there is some pushback on the Department of Revenue um, in, comparing, in comparing the price per barrel of oil that <clears throat> other nations in the world use versus Alaska's homegrown um, dollar forecast. And that affects our bottom line differently. And so all of these numbers are being uh, pressed on because it's important to Alaskans that as we take up a discussion on the governor's proposed um, SB 4001. And, and what that is is a payroll tax uh, as described by the administration. I believe Mr. Teal used different language to describe it uh, today. I, I'm drawing a blank on what you specifically said, David. But uh, I wanted to thank the department publicly because uh, uh, the Senate reached out to the Department of Natural Resources to the administration and asked for updated forecast numbers. And so we're just trying to get on the table with Alaskans the real changes and how, how the administration has at our request updated numbers and our legislative finance team is now using those updated numbers that are different from the revenue forecast that was generated for the general public to look at. And if I could highlight um, and point to Senator Machicki's point is that there is a great upside compared to <clears throat> what is now being described as uh, an error. Uh, that's not how it was presented to the Senate Finance Committee last year. It was, the, it was a judgment uh, on the department that they um, they forecasted a price, right? And so they, they got it wrong. And that's not an, I guess it's an error if it's hard cash, but they, they, they forecasted a different number. And Senator Machicki is pointing out that this slide uh, from some's perspective may be a bit shy on the actual comparison from the revenue forecast, but Ledge Finance is trying to give us apples to apples uh, to look at from our last point of a conversation with the public. So again, I wanna thank the administration. Typically we don't see a revenue forecast until a bit later and they press to get us that information. <laughs> some of that might change. And for this committee, I know that we know